And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of Outdoor Journal Radio. We're back. We're back from a long, it seemed We're like back. a long extended trip. Uh, we just uh, got in from the Northwest Territories. And what an adventure yeah. it was. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get into that one maybe in a future podcast. You're a very com- up and coming close one, but uh, oh, yeah, such a great, uh, such a great trip. We've been a couple of road warriors here. The whole team actually a bunch of road warriors. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, that Northwest Ontario run and then Northwest Territories run. Oh my God, we've been putting in some uh, some miles, bud. Yeah, boy, so. I can hardly wait for my paycheck Friday. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Give her, give her. Welcome like, to, right the, to the beer store. Yes, sir, Bobby. Hell yeah. yeah. I've, I've already got it committed to that. And them. I remember I that when I worked for Hydro. That's, that was it. We got our paycheck, and it was right to the beer store. First stop after the bank was to the beer store every time. <laughs> the good old days, eh, Ange? Yeah, boy. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what a wonderful guest we have for you today. Or, well, okay, let me maybe reel that back in again. What a wonderful guest we have for me today. <laughs> yeah, and I mean yeah, that sincerely. That. I think everybody's going to get something out of this guest, though. He's a to, you he's know a, a learned man for sure. He mm-hmm. sure is. Uh, his name is Ian Mucher. He'll be joining us uh, momentarily. Uh, president or vice president? He's the co-owner. Him and uh, his brother Mike Mucher uh, own probably the largest, although he might not admit to it, uh, largest contributor in terms of soft goods to the outdoor industry in Canada. Uh, If you look at uh, products that are sitting on the shelf of your favorite retail store in the camping department, in the footwear department, in the outerwear department, and pretty much all departments, you flip it over and you look at it, you'll see a little world famous tag there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're responsible for just about everything other than the big brands, right? Why did you choose Ian over Mike or did they make that choice or how did that come about? Okay, so you want to know the truth? Yeah, I do. So I've been asking Ian. Ian, uh, by the way, we'll get into this when he comes on, but he's an old friend of mine. I did business business with him and his brother for, for 100 years. Uh, but he was a big fan of the original radio show on, uh, gotcha. on Sportsnet. Gotcha. And so what would happen, he would, uh, he would listen to the show, and then he'd always, after the show, make a comment about how crappy it was or <laughs> how this guest was terrible or that guest was like it's something disparaging right okay. and so i'd ask him well, well if you think why don't you come on the show and mike would never have any uh, this is say, Ian. This no is saying Ian. mike would never say anything about the show no mike no mike didn't listen no, to it or no every once in a while mike say hey hey good show uh, okay. uh, like the like i listened to it uh, you know what okay so anyways, so for years, I asked him to come on the radio show, and he kept refusing and refusing and refusing. And then, of course, we moved it to podcast, and the same thing. Well, about a month and a half, two months ago, I was uh, at their office, and I invited him on the show, but knowing full well he was going to refuse, but I said, I just that was just a courtesy because I'm having your brother Mike come on the show. But I knew. Oh, I, I, okay. What? Well, I've been asking you for I don't know how many years. So I decided enough of that. I'm going to ask your brother Mike. Come on, show. Well, when do you? When do you? Like, how does? Where? How, I'll come on the show. <laughs> So that was uh, it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm glad I asked that question. Okay, uh, finally. Mike, I want to have on the show, too, because I think he'd be a blast. Oh, my God, he's a character. They're both such characters. He so. would be a blast, oh, too. Mike could so. be, yeah. But yeah. today, uh, you'll get the um, one half of the Mutual Brothers uh, on the show, and you're going to enjoy it tremendously. I know I'm going to, but... Uh, before we get to the world-famous story, let's uh, figure out what's going on here, big boy. Yeah, man. How about shop.fishingcanada.com? Uh-huh. You know what? We can, I mean, I don't know what's, if there's anything brand new. I no, mean, we've got, so we got a lot of product on there I'll now. I'll tell you better. what's been a, a shock to me. Selling like crazy. But. To me, personally, is the um, reinterpreted and how how appropriate is that? Because the king of reinterpretation is going to come on the show in a few moments. But the reinterpreted Fish in Canada logo with the with the fish. With the walleye, with the, the walleye, muskie, so. and uh, large Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? Walleye. 
Hey, Who you knew? know what? Who Old knew? school, sometimes you got to tap out, buddy. Sometimes you got to, you know, you got to tap a little bit, submit, and then say, okay, yeah, let's try something new. Why, why not, right? They're great hoodies. They're great. They, yeah. they mean, they're, they is it great. just the hoodies or is it uh, anything else just with that yet? Right now, it's just the so hoodies. Just the hoodies. But the t-shirt will be a great, that would oh, be a great move oh, on a t-shirt yeah. too, right? So that's so. coming up next. But uh, yeah, I know, doing very well. It's uh, Fishing Canada. Uh, shop.fishingcanada.com is the uh, store address, but you can also access it through the front door like I do. And that is go to fishingcanada.com, get in there, say hello, you know, touch, feel, look at the news, maybe uh, how to take the uh, poll, check, the, poll take there. the poll there. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff and then click on the store. How about enter the contest before you do any of that? Of course, that's why, you know, one of the good reasons to be there, right? Why Enter not? the contest. That's uh, you do that, and then and then you go into the store, and then you, you the, surround the yourself. The contest with. is one of many as they're oh, ongoing all the time. Just God. to let you know. So I just saw a Garmin watch contest again on there the other day. There's just like there's all kinds of. You stuff You wear around. a Garmin watch. Hell you? yeah, I, do. I used to. Hell I used yeah, to, I and I loved it. But I stopped wearing it for some reason. I, you know what it was? I found a little redundancy. I've got my my. Um, phone on my, ba- on my back pocket yeah but you have to pull your phone out but this well, versus yeah, pulling yeah. the phone or it's, yeah. it's just you boom you do it like that and you get the time it's, it's, this, this watch does everything and i use it for telling time that's about it <laughs> 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 i turn off the notifications all my texts but this thing was buzzing about 14 hours a day i'm thinking okay i can't take you know this. you know one of the reasons why i did stop wearing it is because i must have pushed something on it some kind of measuring something or other because it would just vibrate like yeah, every, yeah, exactly. I don't know, every There's notifications and stuff yeah. coming through. And, whatever. and the next thing you know, like you also with your uh, your step monitor will give you a goal has a ten thousand steps or something. It'll it'll do that. I like the heart rate monitor on it too, though. I do like that when oh. you get on the treadmill or when you're working out at the gym, stuff like that. That's kind of there's even a fishing uh, app, I guess you'd call it on this a fishing app. Yeah, you can even have a like. There's even a, down to a fish counter. Oh, if you want to count your fish that day, you know, they talk about it all the time. Just every time you hit that watch and you, you can't do that, can you? It's a very, very technical sound. Uh, I love the sound of it, though. Thank I you. I love the sound Thank of it. Thank you. Um, anyways. Yeah, contest. Contest a, galore. Contest galore. So. You can even win one of those right there. Beautiful yeah. Garmin watches. Yes, sir. And um, what do we got? No, listener feedback. Listener feedback, Bob Grove from Michigan, U.S. of A. Oh, by the way, I love it. can I just interrupt you for of a moment? Michigan course. can remind you. I want to uh, let folks know that our very own, our lovely, our talented Dean Taylor, um, producer of this very program, is a little under the weather today. And so he uh, had to phone in sick, which is very unusual for him. Uh, but filling in for him is the equally talented and wonderful uh, Vova. Oh, my. Vladimir right. Babushkin. The normal, is that right? Did uh, I say that right, Vova? The cameraman. Vladimir Babushkin, not bad. So not bad. he's double tagging us today. He's uh, working on the board. Multitasker. And he's working at the camera. The cameras, and the everything. So, yeah, he's I mean, a one-man show. Who's better than him? I mean, I, he is a one-man show, without a doubt. If you don't believe him, ask him. And he set this up so quick. This set, we, we said, okay, we're running the podcast. Dean can't come in. Boom, 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 boom. He had it done like... Which kind of makes me wonder, you know, that half day that Dean spends setting this thing up. A little, a little uh, bit more, canine you know, fortification uh, going on well, on there. Well, there could uh-huh. be some of that happening. You know, I don't want to say, because uh, he's a little under the weather. Weather and I don't want to kick anybody when they're not feeling good. So we'll uh, discuss it when he gets back. Anyways, uh, wish you all the best, my friend. Get better soon. Okay. Let's Bob feedback Grove again. from Michigan. Sorry. Love your podcast. I used to go to Ontario with my uncles fishing once a year. I grew up watching your TV show and dreaming of being able to go to Canada fish again. So obviously... Uh, he watched it through either WFN or maybe satellite or we whatever. Spill, or we like spill that. over the border. We ooze, don't on, we? Oh, we, we, we ooze. ooze like a bad infection, buddy. <laughs> Honest to God. You, <laughs> you, you remember those? Oh, God. Don't ooze remind me. Ooze like a don't bad infection. Me. Every little um, uh, border town south of, of the 49th. Of course. They're, they're all familiar with our, somehow our pick fishing it up, Canada right? show. So, yeah. Uh, I'm able to go up this year again to Missin Abbey Dog Lake, which we are familiar with. Mm-hmm. Great, uh, great area uh, in the Algoma region where I haven't been in 23 years. Your TV show got me through many years. I wasn't able to get up there. 
Thank you. That's nice. Bob Grove from wonderful. Michigan. Thanks, Bob. That's a wonderful note. Uh, just a little feedback, and we uh, we do appreciate that, buddy. And thanks for watching. And, and for, good luck at Miss and Abby in Dog Lake. This well, year. yeah, have fun. That's going to be a great trip. Um, yeah, if you're out there listening to that and saying, "Well, that's kind of nice," I I kind of did. I was I was watching these guys when I was a kid, and they did this and that. Well, you know what? Send us a little note. Yeah, a little love, note. baby. Yeah. Hell yeah. We love hearing that stuff. You get to say it back on the podcast, then that's exactly. love in return right there. And how does that work, by the way? So everybody who sends in a message like that will uh, be on uh, listener feedback? Sure. If you want everybody in, you just got to say everybody. Well, how, we don't make it. We don't do enough podcasts for that. Oh, okay. There's got to be a way. How did Bob Grove from Michigan get it, on it, the show today? Like, it just like, like a feather. It dropped in the Dean's lab. And whoosh, He's and got the 45-gallon drum. He doesn't have that drum. He does so. It's 25 gallons. It's not 40. It's a bunch of bullshit. Thank it's not a bunch you, of bullshit. Boba. Thank you, It's Boba. not. Thank you. What's, uh, what's the drum made out of? It's steel. It's, it's metal. It's, metal it's like, drum? yeah, like it's a, a metal drum. drum. It's kind of rusty, but he's like paint, those, he sanded it and he painted it. All up. It's, uh, One of those kettle drums. I like those. Sure. Like a Caribbean. Uh, exactly. Is that, is that what a kettle there drum is? Go. Yeah, there you go. Look at you. Uh, Podcast Network highlights, which you'll see on uh, the Fish in Canada uh, website. Uh, this week today i don't even know what period of time uh we are uh honoring the first <gasps> year anniversary Woo-hoo! of the eating wild podcast on saying. the outdoor journal radio podcast network episode 52 oh, yeah yeah, yeah baby. good for them good for them one year and the, and they did the a way, podcast we, we're yeah. 127 by the way today we're okay. episode 127 wow wow um and we um where was I? oh I, and and they did a podcast uh, for the anniversary show and it is wonderful i had a chance to, to get some uh, previews of it some good laughs it is outstanding they talk about laughs. the difficulties uh the surprises that uh, podcasting brought into their lives uh, as well as their plans for future podcasts so you you if you're a follower of eating wild which I am, and Which you are. We you are. should be. It's a great podcast, everybody. But these guys are great. They're characters, man. They're, they're, it's not it's, just it's, about eating, by the way. It's not no. just about food prep. It's not just about not even. healthy. The, no, it's just uh, it's about life. everything. It's about life. It's about uh, outdoors, and yeah. yeah, these guys are great. Fish and hunt and all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, check it out. It's episode 52. Uh, happy one year anniversary episode of Eating Wild. The podcast on the Outdoor nice. Journal Radio podcast. Well done, Network. boys. Congrats. Nice. Now, in the news. Yes. On said fishingcanada.com. Yes, yes, yes. Is a, a story that I saw this before we even put it up on the news. Somebody sent it to me. I thought it was a spoof or some kind of a joke. Uh, Why story, do you say that? Well, because it was, you'll, you'll see it. I mean, if you haven't no, seen it I just it read it over here. Oh. What, what do you, you think haven't the seen the part? video? You haven't no. seen the video? No, I haven't. Oh, that's what. Ah, wow. I got you. I have Anyways, to see this. Uh, it's William Shatner. Speak- I love Billy Shatner. I love him. I love <laughs> William Shatner. I'm just going to tell you that right now. The guy is, there's something about him. He's so funny. He's so, uh, how do you call it? Nonchalant. Doesn't even try to be funny. He just is, or he seems like that. He's probably got just great acting, but but I love him. He is anyway, something he's else. He's something else. For sure. Anyways, he speaks out um, on open uh, pen salmon farming okay um it's a, a piece that was uh, collaborated between william shatner and ryan reynolds production company and it's a little bit uh it might be some offside language used okay but i think most of it's been bleeped uh but it is uh out there and if you are a proponent of salmon farming, or if you don't give a shit one way or the other, this may change your mind after these guys finish with it, because wow. it is pretty. So they bizarre. were supposed to be phased out in 2025, yeah. But it's now been extended no. to 2029. I'm assuming yeah. that's why the boys are freaking out, right? They're yeah. that extra. I've been, I've been. Uh, this this uh, phasing out thing has been going on since I first. Right. I first yeah. ran it. Well, we had interviews with both sides of this debate. Uh, back in the early 2000s, for God's sakes. Uh, it's all about one? the money, isn't it's the it? Money. It's obviously it's the money. about the, the dough. So if you're not familiar with the problem, uh, open ocean pens where they raise uh, 
97 percent of the salmon Sam- that you raised buy salmon, yeah. uh, in stores um, is raised in open pens in the ocean and the I, uh, I byproduct up, of that is just uh, horrific on i our looked up some of the stats and there's currently 57 salmon farms in bc um in 2023 there was 527 thousand metric tons of yep. salmon caught or Farm, raised and farmed, farmed. Yeah. the u.s european union and japan are among the largest consumers of this of the salmon salmon industry in 2022 that's as far as i could get the sales were nine hundred and seventy four thousand three hundred million dollars almost a billion dollars in back then industry. like that at the and when they close it down the only problem is it employs like at least 500 bc people so that it does down, your, and, your and, downside and it, right? arguably the uh, blowback from that too it's not just those people but you know arguably it, it the down it trickles pe- down it, it employs it people in the, the processing uh, air, air plants it pro- uh, packaging plants anyway. in the grocery stores i mean sales everything there's right? no doubt so. about it it's it's uh, it's a slippery slippery slope yeah 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 but yeah. the damage that it does is uh, is worth spreading looking disease into. Like, yeah. like these pen salmon will like sea lice for instance they will spread that to the wild salmon that are out uh, you know in, in the real yeah. world sort of thing like yeah. that so it's not all you know it's not good in, in that sense no. for sure so and there are solutions that have been brought to the table uh, unfortunately most of them are rel- relatively expensive but you know when you look at what the listen to the numbers you just spewed there on, on the on the dollars that are generated from this thing well can't you can't you put a couple hundred thousand into it you know a quarter mil into it maybe yeah, you it's know? more than that but but it doesn't matter five it doesn't mil matter. out of a billion yeah, but the only way that's going to happen is if we stop doing this extending you know from 25 to 29 right. uh, you right. know because now it's just going to go as is why uh, why put money you know. into a safer way to do it when we're just going to extend it yeah. and by the way these are all uh, non-canadian companies just so that we have it straight Correct. there is not a canadian owned the biggest one is called maui m o w i they're the all most of them are norwegian and, mm-hmm. and all Correct. sorts of places like yeah. that so but they're just using our water and the government is is okaying it because obviously there's kickbacks there's involved. There's some money there for sure for the government, so. as usual, right? Have a look at the video. Let us uh, know what you think. Say yay, say nay, whatever you like. I think there's going to be a lot of get rid of it. I think there's going to be a lot of see ya. See ya. Fan question this week is by Keith Goslin from Manitoba. Another Manitoba boy. Wow, we're getting a lot of Manitoba folks. Love them. Um, You too can be submitting questions here for uh, the weekly fan question portion of the show. All you have to do is contact us at info at fishingcanada.com and uh, ask away. And this is a perfect example of what type of question you will get through to the show because this question from keith says fluorocarbon leader to braided line what is your preferred knot for casting through guides that's a great question because it's it's uh used every day by a a high number of anglers nowadays you know what i mean so uh, i'm not going to say every angle angler runs braid to fluorocarbon but a lot of them do. i would think uh, it's got to be like 75 I, i'm ho- i hope maybe it 80%. is because it's a great idea yeah. you know yeah. what i mean i hope that i hope that it actually so the, is, the so. problem with it is that you've got two totally opposite um, materials that you're trying to tie together and conventional knots will not allow the two to marry and not slip yeah so over the years since since the advent of really of braided line everybody's been scrambling to find the perfect knot that will allow you to um, put fluorocarbon on the business end of that line correct and in my opinion i don't think there is a knot that is perfect i don't think there is a knot that that has absolutely no friction on the guides the line guides as you're casting out i think Regardless of the profile of the knot and how small and, and, and cylindrical and, and whatever it is, it's still going to make contact Correct. with the guide. So, yeah, that's it. it's so physics, right? I think, I think it comes down to what are you most comfortable with tying? 
Right. Right. There's a bunch of things. There's strength. There's comfort and, and that. And there, there's size. And there's time. Time tying it. And that's a big one. And, and tying under adverse conditions. Wind, wind blowing that, that braided stuff. shit. I hate braided line when uh, the wind's blowing oh. it's all over the place and all that. Did you see that mess I made last week? <laughs> I picked out one of your backlines. Remember that? I that one it. shocked me. So last week we're in the Northwest Territories and um, windy as hell as, as it has been every shoot this year. And um, I was playing around with a reel that was not functioning properly. I was trying to make make it function properly, but it was not working. So I desperately said, all right, all right, let's back everything off of this baby. We'll get her going. And <laughs> made a cast and, and I, it blew up. I mean, my reel just blew up. I've never seen a bird's nest this bad. And I've been a creator of many of those. So... As Pete knows, I'm very patient. I'll I'll pull those babies out and carefully back forth, get it all out. Finally, I had to give up on this one. I put it. Okay, that's it. We're retiring. Uh, number eight is now off the field. He's retiring out, it. Tapped. And about I don't know a half hour later, uh, obviously he was in the middle of doing something else. No, no, we were right. We were driving from spot to spot, so oh, I got time. Oh, right, right. So I had some time. So he picks it up, and I swear to God, this is not made up. He just goes. There you go, buddy. It's not. I said, are you shitting me? <laughs> How the hell is that even possible? And it was braid too, right? It, it was, was braid. It was so straight worse. braid. So, which is really, a lot of times the braid, before we get back to the question, a lot of times the braid will just kind of stick in deep into the spool of line. And if you, sometimes when you get desperate, you just pull it, you crack it. Oh, what? There's nothing else. I'm going to cut it out. So you pull as hard as you can or whatever. And then all of a sudden, it pops and then comes in. Sometimes. Sometimes. Other times when you do that, yeah, she's it's, all it's wrapped over. around you, underneath. You need a cutting torch. Oh, yeah. To get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, A grinder. Anyways. Um, if not, you you like the... Uh, a foreign. Bob foreign. Bob the foreign. foreign knot. It, right. To me, and the reason I like it, it's not the smallest profile knot by any means. Correct. It's um, not... The easiest knot. Oh, I'm, I, it's I pretty think, close. But to for the me, easiest. it is yeah. right. And but what I like about it is that you can you can perform it under adverse conditions, either mm -hmm. wind, low light. Uh, you can do this thing in a closet. That's you do how easy it is. Three turns. Is that three turns? Three yeah. turns, which nobody really, not many people do. I know when yeah. you learned it off Pizer, whoever yeah. it was, he yeah. was a five turn or whatever. Yeah. You got it down to three, three. turns, and, and it works. when you when you learn that knot, you'll see what ends. What we mean by the three turns on that knot, and and he can tie that thing really quick. My favorite on the opposite end of that spectrum, I I tie the FG knot, but. It is such a pain, like out in the field. Oh. I, tr I, I tie them all the day before, the, uh, at home, off the water, whatever, because it is, when you look it up, you're going to see that it is a bit of a process. It's not real, real hard. Well, you can get it down to a minute, a minute and a half or whatever, doing a pretty good job. But but you got to have every wrap perfect on it and, and the tension on both lines, on your line from your, the braid from your rod and reel to your fluorocarbon leader. You got to, but, but it is... As Ange was talking about, the, the minuses to that are the time span and blah, blah, blah. The plus to that, it is the thinnest of all of them. Very, so very small profile. Yeah. And, so, and that's and, the key. And the idea to that is that when you have two knot, two uh, ropes, strings, whatever you want to talk about, you're tying knots, they usually wrap around each other, right? So it's double the size as, as like a foreign knot, like a double uni, all these things. They kind of double on themselves. The thing about an FG knot is that the braid wraps around the fluorocarbon. And it doesn't sound like it would hold, but it does. It just wraps around the fluorocarbon. So you've just got this thin one wrap and then it cinches. There's a way of cinching it into the fluorocarbon. It kind of digs in a little bit. That's the beauty of it. It's thin. It's long and thin. But I'll tell you what, it's a it's a pain. You were going to say long and thin goes right in. Is that what you were going to say? Nah, it works. But boom. <laughs> there, <laughs> right. thank you. There you go. Thank you, Bubba. Uh, versus short and thick does the trick. That is right? correct. Right. So, so, anyways, that FG knot is there's another one out there that's even. There's a bobbin knot. You can use a, a bobbin to tie it up. I haven't even got there's that one. Yet, there's, there's a ton of knots. There's a ton of them. There's a ton of them. But the, the whole key is that. There are many times where you, you should be using a fluorocarbon leader versus straight braid. You know, I mean, we use the Yozuri uh, 
yellow braid, for instance. We'll use the, the color braid. Well, you don't want to tie that direct to your lure. So we'll run a 10 foot, you know, plus a uh, leader on a fluorocarbon leader. So, and that alleviates a lot of that visual aspect that the fish will not see your your lines during your presentation. So it's a, it's a great um, arsenal, a great trick to put in your bag of tricks for sure when you're out At there. At the end of like the really day, a knot is a knot is a knot. Find one that you're comfortable with. Uh, test it. Test it. Test modify it. Like it. it. Sometimes you do a slack line hook set, you're yeah. going to break knots. Stuff yeah. like that, you're going to break them. So test it and, and do your and then find one you like the best and, and go with that for sure. So hopefully that's, uh, hopefully that's answered the question. We interrupt this program to bring you the much anticipated bonus code for the latest Fishing Canada giveaways. This week's code is Life Jacket. That's Life Jacket. L I F E J A C K E T. Just type that in the bonus code section of the contest and receive 100 free entries towards all our current giveaways. For those who haven't entered yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Head on over to fishingcanada.com while you listen to the rest of this episode. Click contests and sign up for all the latest Fishing Canada giveaways. And now, back to the show. All right, enough about the knots. I need to get into the do's. That's uh, interesting, though. Next. I like that knot talk. I that's agree. that's I agree. good stuff. Um, our guest today is a very close friend of mine but also a business associate of mine that I've been fortunate enough to be dealing with for the last four decades. Mm -hmm. um, yes, sir. Most days, some days not so much, but anyways, we'll talk about that. His name is I, Ian. I've met, uh, just to be here for the audience, uh, I met our, our guest through Angelo and Reno at the time, and let me just tell you, they have a very unique relationship, okay? <laughs> for somebody that can not only... Put up with Ange, but has more comebacks than anybody a, I've ever heard in my a life. That's bunch of bullshit he, he, right he can, there. That's he can play the game the with Ange on. as good as anybody, if not better. So there you go. Uh, without further ado, my good friend, uh, he is the vice president of world famous sales. I said he was a friend, but also a business associate. And I, I'm going to go out on a limb right now and say that if you're listening to this podcast, chances are really good that you have a connection with Ian as well. And we'll mm -hmm. explain that in yeah. a moment. Yeah. He is the vice president of world world famous sales of canada finally you agreed to come on the show <laughs> I, uh, uh, listen you know what i've always had known i've had a good radio face <laughs> so i figure now's the time but uh, from what i can see you can actually see me which is scary yes it is you're a beautiful man yeah. buddy don't worry you're wonderful yeah, thank you. welcome, you're welcome. Uh, to the outdoor journal buddy you've been uh, i know you've been listening to it for a number of years when we were on uh the sports net uh, was he ever the on fan. the radio show no he refused no. every time really? i invited i thought he was on no no way i invited him on i'm gonna say a hundred times oh yeah he has never accepted it wow so, yeah uh, this yeah. is yeah. i don't trust myself <laughs> <laughs> I always told you, there's no delays. If you no, can't edit it, I don't want to do it. This yes, is editable, no. buddy. Say whatever you want. We can get rid of or keep whatever we feel necessary. So there you go. So just sort of to bring everybody up to speed, uh, I mentioned that um, Ian, and by the way, brother uh, Mike, mm -hmm. Michael Mucher as well. Um, what's Mike's uh, position there? If you're vice president, what's Mike's position? I think he's, he'd be the president. He's the older, he's the older son. You know, we're actually both vice presidents. Oh, uh, oh okay. there you go. All right. Okay. And, uh, I, was yeah. just, I was just throwing that out there. I originally met uh, you and your brother uh, through your father. Um, yes. God rest Big his soul. Al. Big Al. Years ago, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 79, 80-ish. You guys, you and your brother were running around the warehouse in diapers, I think. I mean, you know. <laughs> um, when we had the retail store, Barclays, uh, we uh, used to do business with the Mutures, with uh, mm -hmm. with World Famous, and that's how I got to meet the boys. And uh, So you did all your starting been, business with Al. You, you yeah, oh, you yeah. got into the company? Uh, I, I, yeah, and, and if we could, I don't know whether, you know, you, you object or not, but I'm going to say the hell with you. I don't care. I'd like to start by talking about <laughs> Dad a little bit. Um, how he started the company. Maybe you can, you know, walk us through it. How did this whole world famous, by the way, I think I may reinforce what I said earlier. I know that if you're listening to this show, 
world famous has come into your life. Oh, without somewhere. a doubt. You're so, walking through Canadian uh, Tire. You're walking through any of these retail stores. Walmart, you have seen be, Walmart. You have seen world famous and sure. used it and, and bought used it. it yeah. uh, how did this whole thing start? Because it wasn't an outdoor company to start with. It wasn't an no, outdoors company. No. So uh, the long story, which I'll try to keep short, is. You know, my dad came from uh, Europe after the war um, and came, you know, with 10 cents in his pocket, couldn't speak the language, very uh, high education, grade four, grade five. And, uh, you know, just came to try and build a life. And uh, one day he walks into a, an army surplus store down on King Street and uh, he says, I need a job. And the guy looks at him, it was the owner's son, and he says, well, uh, my father's not here, and uh, you have to come back tomorrow. He goes, no, 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 I need a job. Where's your broom? So he goes, it's over there. And he goes, so my dad goes, he grabs the broom and starts sweeping. And he's sweeping, and he's sweeping till they close. The next day, the father comes in with the son and says, who's that guy over there? Because I don't know, he's been sweeping since yesterday. He needs a job. <laughs> so so uh, the people were very nice. They gave him a job. And, uh, you know, after uh, what my dad had been through as a, as a young lad, nothing really scared him and stuff like that. So he, he started working for these people, and he was very street smart, obviously. And he helped build this retail store into a very, very prosperous, good business. And they treated him like gold. They treated him like one of the family and whatever. And, uh, he, um, after 10 years, he wanted to be a partner in the business, but they didn't want to do that. And that's, that's fine. They didn't have to as a family business. So he decided he wanted to go open his own business. And he went out and he uh, put on an offer on a store one block down. Ooh. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so it came, uh, to the day, it was a few weeks later, it came to the day that he was supposed to pick up the keys, give them the deposit, the rent deposit, whatever. It's 10 in the morning. He's in his car. He says, I can't do this. Wow. Says these people were good to me. He says, I, I'm going to put them out of business if I do this. So he sat in his car, had a drink, passed out. At about seven, eight o'clock, everybody's looking for him. What happened, right? And uh, he comes home and finally, and he says, I, I couldn't do it. He says, uh, I'm not going to, I can't do these to these nice people. So he decided to go into the wholesale business and uh, instead. So, and what you got to understand is back then, there was no such thing as the camping business. Anybody who wanted to go camping or, or whatever, would go to their local surplus store, they'd buy a used tent or a used sleeping bag or whatever, and uh, they would go. So anybody who's in the camping, that was in the camping business back then, had their roots from army surplus. So uh, he, uh, he started selling surplus and this and that, and there was an actual world famous in the States. They were a massive company. Um, and they were one of the first to ever do packaged camping goods like Coleman and, and guys like that. And uh, my dad knew the guy from the surplus business and said, Hey, you know, I'd like to do what you're doing. I want to do that for Canada. And, you know, in American fashion, you know, they thought we lived in igloos. So he says, yeah, sure. No problem. Go you, do, you go to Canada. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> and uh, so he set him up and uh, my dad actually built a business out of this. And then the Americans eventually went broke, uh, which is unfortunate because it would have been nice to have uh, Big Daddy U.S. Yeah. But um, and then they built it from that. My brother came into the business uh, when he was very young and he helped build it to a pretty good level. And then I came in after uh, after I finished university, after I did my business degree and I came in. And that's how the three moochers got together. Wow. Well, great story. It's a it's a great fascinating uh, piece of history in the outdoors industry in this country, without question. And pe people have no idea. You know what I mean? They see no. that world famous name. It's nice no. to hear these the backstories. Just a lot of these, you know, family yeah. or uh, businesses. You know, to say that it's an empire today um, has grown. It's it's iconic. It's 
It is to the outdoors community uh, what I think skidoo is to snowmobiling. Yeah, it's yeah, you, Kleenex. Right. Uh, Kleenex right. is the tissues. Yeah. I think you guys don't realize just how uh, important the world famous brand has become throughout the years. Now, now a lot of people are thinking, well, you said I I was connected with, it. I've used it. Well, under world famous, uh, there's a series of brands that you guys have uh, have unleashed on the public throughout the last three or four decades. Um, Misty Mountain would be maybe the biggest, am I correct? Most, yeah, most uh, highest profile? Yeah, the clothing, outerwear, clothing, accessories, that would be one of the biggest. Yeah, underwear by, by them as well. Yeah. I, I remember selling that by the tons. Uh, sleeping bags, tents, every single accessory that you can imagine for... Uh, people who camp and otherwise enjoy the outdoors, uh, it, 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 you'll find it under the bush, world famous. A bush line logo. is that bush the, line. That's is all the camping gear. Yeah, of, yeah. Like yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. And then there's wet skins, which is our rainwear. Right. And uh, so what's we the have difference? Rock water designs. What's the difference what's between in, wet skins and Misty Mountain? Is there a difference in the two? Or wet skins is <laughs> wet skins is mostly rainwear. Okay. Um, and Misty Mountain is mostly uh, winter outerwear. And, okay winter summer outerwear and whatever. Gotcha. so a okay. little different looks yep. but you know it's all it was all built for each brand was built for different purpose um depending on the time and who it was for because you know listen we, we only deal with canada and that's not an easy trick right 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 um, i want to talk you know, about that too um as you know we've had tons of philosophical discussions about that how i feel about the fact that you have ignored going south of the border but uh that's a whole other a whole other issue i want to get back to al for just a moment because i i what ian described now think about this here's a, a guy um who i'm sure didn't have a whole lot of dough who finally put together a couple of pennies and was able to make a commitment for a lease and, and, and probably had some goods already purchased to open a store, but last minute, his heart wouldn't let him do that. The reason I bring that back up is because that's the way Al worked. That's the way he worked. He, on the outside, he was a rough and tough and, you know, <laughs> difficult businessman uh to deal with but i'm you know when you got to know him as 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 i did through the number of years i worked with him he was the nicest person that you'd ever want to shake hands with uh yeah i only met him a couple of times i remember seeing him in that office his office <laughs> when the boys were now they're running the business and he's got that little wee black and white tv in there and he, i think he was smoking a cigar or exactly, a cigarette or something exactly. like that i laughed he was such a character man but the first day i met him he gave everybody a break and that's the important thing he i remember it. from the early days of world famous is that uh, you guys were the um, independent retailers salvation uh, because there weren't many distributors back then that uh, were were on the side of the independents. You always were, which obviously allowed you to build that part of the business. But the same token, you own the mass merchants as well. So you, you, and I and and I attribute that to, to the way Al ran the business and the way you two uh, ran it after he was gone. Is that you're able to to kind of serve both masters very well extremely well and that's you have no choice well yeah. well you in say Canada, that. you have no choice it's yeah. uh, either you're selling to them both or or you're not going to be around the big guys can get rid of you tomorrow the little the smaller guys are there to support you um oh. and they'll be there tomorrow you know they're they're the big guys can direct import they can do their own thing the smaller guys really can't and we were their bank to right. be quite honest. Yeah, right. you were, for sure. Um, for sure you, you know, were. There's, there's, that's interesting, yeah. There's no question about that at all. You were my bank. You know that. I mean, for... I for sure do. Yeah, I remember how exactly. long it took to get paid. But boy, I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you, at that, at that interest, the interest was Ooh. like, woohoo. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man. yeah. You got real interest payments. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> these, these brands, like Misty Mountain, uh, Wetskins, et cetera, they are world-famous brands, right? Are they, they? You own those brands? Yeah, we own the brands. How do you, yeah. how do you become up with that do you find something that you like and you buy it or do you guys invent something or how does that work hang on ian before I answer he i haven't filled him in on the benefits and virtues of reinterpretation so maybe uh, maybe this would be a good time to to teach him that ah uh -huh. yeah no, re enough said. No, we're, 
reinterpretation that's with product. The brands was a different story. Right. The brands were, just to give you an example, how Misty Mountain came about. Right. So um, we were in our old building, um, and we were trying to come up with a name for clothing, for outerwear. We had just started. We had one jacket. And uh, I was in the washroom. My brother was in the room next door. And so he goes, uh, how about Magic Mountain? I go, no, nah, no, nah, we can't use that. Wonderland has that. They're probably registered. I said, what about Misty River? He goes, nah, it sounds kind of sucky. So I said, I screamed out from the toilet. I said, I got it, Misty Mountain. And he goes, I like that. That's good. Okay, Misty Mountain, let's register it. <laughs> Done. See? That's they a great story. They had a whole a uh, room a whole full team. Of, yeah. yeah, they had a whole room full of experts, uh, branding people. <laughs> yeah, with, yeah, yeah, yeah he he into the shitter. That's the best. <laughs> Well, that's what I love happens. it. That's I the way good it. things always happen. Um, one quick story, because you guys really didn't um, dive into the fishing world. That's You kind of left, the, you dabbled with it, but you never really dove in. You own the camping sector, but, but fishing you kind of left alone. Except one time, I remember I got a call from Al. Uh, this would have been the early 80s sometime. And he said, Angelo, uh, fishing rods. What do you think of them? Well, I don't know, they're fishing rods. I use them all the time. They're, yeah, you use them to catch fish. No, no, I know. I know. Um, graphite. And at that time, we had just been reading about graphite in magazines. Right. Right. Yeah, about I this, remember this, back then. Remember, remember? Yeah. Like graphite was going to be, oh, the next my best God. Thing, right? It was Graphite it was and boron. It. it was two different and boron, things. Yeah. Right. Anyways, he's, he's graphite. He's, um, can you sell them? I said, well, yeah. It depends on the price. Well, and I can't remember the price. He says, well, I got graphite rods for like $12 or something. And uh, I said, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, we could sell those. Absolutely. Graphite rods. Like, yeah, yeah, here, I was reading uh, stuff on So anyways, he says, the only problem is I got to buy 4,000 of them or something ridiculous. I don't remember the number, 2,000, 5,000, 4,000, whatever it was. And uh, and he says, and, 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 and I'm going to need your help. If I'm going to buy them, I'm going to need your help. So I jumped in, and that was, I think, a month before the sportsman show that year in Toronto, mm. the big sportsman show. And we went to the sportsman show with this world-famous – graphite rod and we put was was we, the world famous brand on the rod no remember? Was it, the, only, the, the only thing was on there was ts i don't know whether you remember this yet or not but they no, had, i don't remember that they had ts stamped on it so i have no idea what that was but anyways there were thousands of these rods we committed to them went to the sportsman show and we sold every single one Every single one. They were in the barrel, weren't they? Were they the ones in the barrel? Or no, the no, that was barrel. This is when Bob Amell, we had oh, Bob Amell. Bob Amell and, chirping and, out there. And what we used to do, we used to, we, we, we'd bring out a box of them, and in a box there was like 100, right? We'd bring out a box out in the aisle. This is when you could have fun at the sportsman show, by the way. Yeah, yeah it was fun. It was a blast. And we'd go now. out in the middle of the aisle and cut open a box of 100 rods. And the show would start. And, and, and so basically we, we said that there's going to be 100 lucky people that are going to end up with these 100 rods. Once they're gone, we're gone. She's all over. <laughs> and, and that kind of a thing. And I remember he came up with a put, it, put the rod up on my Adam's apple. And the yeah. guy would be holding the rod in his eye. Do you feel that? The guy said, yeah, <laughs> yes. That's it. That's graphite. That's why. Anyways, and we just had a blast. But I bring that up because... And I'm sure that there are a million stories like that from other retailers, small retailers. None of that would have happened without Al and World Famous and your company. And, and well, so it's, uh, another great story is the guy, uh, you know, Sale. Yeah. You know, they were, they originally were an army surplus. The original guy was an army surplus guy. And I remember the day he, comes into our place, got to be 40 years ago, comes dirty coveralls, big guy. He was a sweet man um, and a beat up old truck. And he comes in and he says, I'd like to see Mr. Mutcher. I hear he's the surplus king and whatever. So my dad takes a look at him and he says, I'm opening a store. I want to 
I want to uh, get some surplus from you. He goes, okay, go in the back, pick what you want. And uh, we'll settle up later. So he goes, he spent the entire day digging through all this crap, okay? And he's, he's pulling out this and pulling out that. And at the end of the day, the guy was filthy, okay? I mean, and he loaded his truck and he gives my dad a list of what he has. So my dad says, okay, it's like $11,000. My, the guy says, well, oh, I don't have no money. <laughs> so he says, can I pay you later? Didn't even know who he was. <laughs> and uh, my dad looked at him and he goes, okay. He, said, yeah. he figured, you know, if this guy's going to work that hard, right, right, to do this, he says he's got to be okay. And this guy turned out to be the biggest, one of the biggest surplus dealers in Canada. He, yeah. he was, and then he started the stores. Wow. Um, from that. And, uh, that's where it all started. And, uh, amazing guy. Yeah. Wow. Great story. He, um, uh, he had a way of, uh, of figuring people out, huh? He, did. he had a way of figuring people out. He, he could, he could judge by just having a conversation. Yeah. Um, and he was destined to be a businessman oh like from, my from God. going in there, sweeping the floors, oh you know, without God. having a contract, without having a job. And then just, you know, 10 years later, he says, I got to do this. You know, the guy's got gumption. He's got will. And, and then not screwing over that little store. That, that's yeah. Good man. For sure. He's a good man. He was one of the most difficult things I know with my father, it was the same. It's sometimes it's difficult to walk in the footsteps of um, a parent who has a really high profile personality, a real strong personality and high profile within his community. Sometimes it's difficult to just jump on board and, and, and walk in those footsteps. You guys did it probably as smoothly as I've ever seen in the business world. It was seamless, or at least that's the way it appeared to all of us. Tell us a little bit about that period of time where you guys finally realize, holy shit. Well, you know, what? Well, you know, it, look, no family business is easy. Okay. I mean, I've been working with my brother for man, 45 years, almost. Yeah. You tell me how many people have been able to do that. It's not very easy, but yeah. listen, yeah. my dad taught us really well. I mean, uh, he was always there for us. He let us make mistakes. He trusted us. And, uh, you know, he always said, he said, you guys are, are building it. This is all yours. He says, it's up to you to make it work. And uh, he always gave us the latitude to do that. And sure, we'd fight like cats and dogs. I mean, if I don't fight with my brother once a day, it's it's not a good day. <laughs> but at the I end of the day, that. you say good night. And in the morning, you say good morning. I mean, and, and if you can't figure that out, you're never going to survive. So... Um, we were taught very, very, very well. And listen, we were also taught you can screw people once, right? That's it. Don't screw people. Have a good name because that's all you have in life. At the end of the day, when you kick the bucket, the only thing that you got left is your name. Yeah. And uh, that's important. Yeah. That's really important. You guys would be a great reality show. You know oh that, right? Oh, my God. The Mutures. Just call the Mutures, buddy. Oh that would be, just, and just God. in there, in that building. Oh, my. How good would that be? Oh. Because what he's saying, what Ian just said there with him and Mike having one fight a day, it'd be a good day. These two, when they get going back and forth, it is what? It is the best you will ever hear or see in your life. It's so good. <laughs> at least, you know at least once a day. You know it. It would be. Uh, oh, God. It would be great. You know, the. Uh, Business partners are one thing, but um, siblings as business partners, that's a whole different level of um, Oh yeah. You get you know oh, that well, of complexities, right? isn't yeah. it? I mean I did it with my brother. Obviously, Reno and I worked together for twenty five years. So it's it's another level that most people just have no idea. He's got 20 more years on you. I Imagine know. another 20 years with Reno, you and Reno together. Oh my God. Somebody would have been dead. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Somebody would have. No, that's not true. We uh, you, Some great memories. Um, Ian, what I'm goes sorry. on in the day of Ian Mutcher, a world famous at this point in your life? Now it's 40 plus years or whatever, you know, in the, in the business. What, what do you, what's your day like? Well, don't lie, don't question. lie, because because you know I know the truth. So go ahead. <laughs> well, um, listen, it's a lot tougher today than it was 
10 years ago. I mean, things have changed. This world has really changed since, especially since COVID and probably a few years before that. The business has changed. The the way things are done has changed. The customers changed. So, well, I say it's not as, it's not as much fun as it used to be. Um, there, it's much more challenging. It doesn't matter what business you're in or whether it's our business, the retailers, everybody, it's so much more challenging. Um, but you know what? We've been doing it for so long. We still have good relations with a lot of people. We still enjoy doing what we do and we still do okay. So, but it's become extremely, extremely difficult to do what we were doing for the past 30, 40 years. Um, but it is what it is, you know? I mean, uh, luckily we, uh, we're a very solid company. Um, so we can get through whatever it is. Um, but my day, my day involves coming in, looking at my brother, getting probably pissed off by about nine, 10, something like that. Okay. Try to stay away from him until three or four. Uh-huh. And, um, then go home at five, six, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy. Beautiful. Day. Simple, Beautiful. simple gig. Yeah. I mean, Love it. Doesn't it Love doesn't sound it. tough at all. Great gig. <laughs> no, it's pretty easy actually. Uh, you know? How, cause you guys are both very, very hands on. You have yeah. a, a ton of good people working for you, but, but you're very much, um, uh, to say micromanagers, that would be, uh, understated. You guys like to make sure that, you're involved in every facet of your business. Now, some business people in today's world might say, well, that, that'll never work. You can't, you can't micromanage people. You can't, you can't do that. You have to give them some latitude. You have to let them grow. You have to let them fall and pick themselves up and start all over again. But that's not the case at World Famous. And I'm saying no. this in a positive way, by the way. I'm not, because you know how I feel about this. Just talk to us about your business philosophy, if you would. Well, look, first of all, we have most of our people from the warehouse to the office to whatever have been there a minimum of 25 years. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, Lord knows why they don't leave, but um, <laughs> but, but they kind of like it there. And, uh, and, they're all wonderful people. They all know what they're doing. They, you know, they've been doing it long enough. So that makes things a lot easier um, when you have good people. In terms of micromanaging, you know, it's, uh, we always knew what was going on, always. I mean, from buying the goods, designing the goods, selling the goods, you know, who owed us money, who didn't owe us money, we always did. We, eat, we ate, slept and drank our business. And that's probably what made us successful. We didn't have other people that were, um, you know, here today, gone tomorrow. Today, the the timeline of people working for you is two years. Um, You know, you train a guy, he's gone in in two years, he's gone. So we always uh, looked after what we were doing. We were very close. When you, you know, when you used to call me, if you had a question, I didn't get back to you. You got an answer right, right away. And that was important. It was a very personalized business, you know, that, um, you know, and our whole bread and butter was, you know, let's say the 50 or a hundred guys, good stores across Canada that supported us and we supported them. So that's how we did things. And, you know, maybe, maybe it wasn't the right thing. Maybe we could have been a much bigger brand had we, you know, had more people, given out more uh, authority, did more advertising, did more of that. But you know what? Our formula worked. We did okay. We're still around 65 years later. So I don't, I don't have any regrets. I have none whatsoever. I'm, I'm happy with what we've done. I'm proud of what we've done. And uh, whatever happens tomorrow happens tomorrow, but I don't have to answer to anybody. So that's right a great on. thing. It's funny you said that eh? because I was going to, go down that road as well. You guys have done it against all odds. If, if, if I can go down that road because traditional businesses of your size, um, to, especially in your field, uh, don't operate that way. Like what, no. what you guys do, it, it just defies, defies the business world. I'll give you a good example. You might think that because these guys 
have more camping products on the market and in people's hands today than any other co- single company out there, that they are camping experts, right? The company <laughs> is founded on a strong uh, fundamental understanding of camping in the outdoors. Nothing could be further from the truth. You guys understand quality product. You guys understand relationship between product consumer. You guys understand all that, but but you guys, neither one of you guys. I mean, for you, camping is 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 having to go to the Best Western for the weekend. Right? Yeah, that's roughing. Much. That's that's yeah. roughing it, right? Yeah. So we know yeah. that. I, I don't. I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but that's not yeah, what no, you no. do. Episode on the reality show, Ian and Mike on a camping trip. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Boom! There With, we go. Having to use all of oh their world famous God. little gadgetry. Oh, oh. oh my God! That hey, don't bad. laugh. When I was a kid, I, I mean, not a kid. When I was, my kids were young. We took them camping on yeah. a dad's and kids camping trip. No. Nice. Oh yeah. That must I have been traumatic. For three years. No. And the, the funny one was, is one day we're, uh, we're setting up all our tents and, uh, there's a, somebody in the campsite next to me is having a problem setting up their tent. So not, me, a, not, not, a, not a world famous tent. I trust. No. Right. Okay. And I said, I go over and I said, do you need some help? And so I go and I start saying, you go over there, you go over there. And he goes, who are you, Omar the tent maker? <laughs> and I said, well, as a matter of fact, I am. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh, great God. story. That That's is fantastic. fantastic. But, but, but yeah. you know, I, I, I'm not saying that in a negative way. It's reality. You guys know your stuff, but not from the yeah, yeah. inside out, of from course. the outside yeah. in, if you will. Of course. And it's the same with all your lines, clothing. I mean, you know, you'd think you guys were designers in Paris or wherever the hell they designed this shit. But you're not. But I'm yet. Not. he's omar come on (laughs) but yet but yet you know every year you keep coming out with outstanding outerwear that people just love they love it because it's quality well priced yeah well well priced it 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 does the job it's supposed to do nothing outlandish nothing crazy but it works and that's probably the bottom line to your success is that Pretty much every product you put up, there's been a couple of exceptions that we can discuss those in a moment, but most of the products you put on the marketplace work. And and you would think, well, that's got to be because they've got a warehouse full of people that that's all they do all day long. They, they construct and destruct and and figure out what's good for the, for this. And, and it's not the way it is. It's you, yes, it is. you know, it's you and Mike sitting in that office coming up with this stuff and it's fantastic. It's not rocket science, okay? I mean, listen, a product is, I mean, there's fabric, there's accessories, there's sewing, there's welding, whatever it is. Once you learn how to do it, it doesn't really matter the product, okay? And, and that was the whole basis of what World Famous was about. It was, you know, you have basically three types of brands. You have your A brand, your B brand, and your C brands, okay? The A brands are the big, you know, multinationals, you know, all the names, Adidas, Nike, Weba, whoever it is, right? Coleman, these are all huge, huge brands. Then you have your B brands, which is where we would sort of put ourselves is, is that we don't do heavy marketing, um, but our, our products are pr- price, okay, zero. Okay, thank uh, you. <laughs> but, yeah. our, uh, but we also don't charge for it. Right. So, you right. know, it's, it's, it's about we always took the middle road where we're going to provide value. Okay. What you're going to get what you pay for. You're not buying a label. You're not buying whatever you're buying a, a decent quality product for a decent price. And that's what we were about. Um, and you know, I learned this really early on. Um, I remember I had a friend who was in the clothing business and I used to go to him every year to get, um, stuff from him. Cause God forbid I should pay retail. And, <laughs> Uh, I remember he had, uh, he, he had, uh, like, uh, golf shirts, right? So he shows me the golf shirts. He had them under his brand. He had them under another brand, which is like a work type of store. And then he had another brand, which was, um, a high end men's workshop. So his were ticketed at 1999 retail. The workwear store was ticketed at twenty nine ninety nine, and the high end clothing uh, clothing store was at eighty nine ninety nine. The same garment, the exactly all the same. All the same. Wow. Um, 
exactly the same, like no difference whatsoever. Each one had a wholesale cost of 10. So, you know, this is where we learned about, you know, when I was young, you know, I learned about value. I learned about, you know, this type of thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of bullshit out there. Let's put it that way. And, you know, Hey, good on people who can get away with it that are selling a label and, and are whatever, you know, fantastic. I mean, they've, they spend a lot of money on marketing to tell you whatever it's better or whatever. Um, and if you can get it great, but that wasn't our philosophy. We couldn't do that. So you can imagine how difficult a relationship must be between a guy who thinks like that. Right. And a guy who thinks like me. Right. Cause you're totally opposite. We're, you got to advertise we're everything. Marketing, uh, advertising. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's my life. So you can yeah. imagine some yeah, yeah, of the yeah. discussions that he and I, <laughs> well, I, can, we I cannot imagine because in all the years that we've known each other, um, and there have been many times where I have gone to him and uh, said, you know, like, we really should be advertising this thing. Like, really? Like, it's a great brand. I think we could do some wonderful things for you. Mm, does it cost money? Yeah. No, I don't do that. <laughs> and then on the other side of that, on the other side of that, I'll get a phone call, which happened recently. Hey, hey, I got a, I got a product I want you to, to take out and shoot for <laughs> and me on the, on, yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah. And well, yeah, okay. So yeah. you want to buy advertising? No, I don't want to buy advertising. I want you to use it on your show. <laughs> well, well why, why is that, Ian? Well, because people see you using it and then I'll sell it. That's called <laughs> advertising. That's Ian. called brilliance right there on Ian's behalf, right there. That's a brilliant man right there. Yeah, but, but you did take it, so. I did, I did. did, did, did it, uh, By the way, let's talk about that for just a moment. I bet you're talking about the dragonfly, The aren't dragonfly. You? So, yeah. so Ian called me up, uh, I don't know, six months ago, Ian, maybe? Yeah. Something like that. He said, hey, what do you think of that? Uh, there's a, what do you think of a giant uh, dragonfly on a wire? It's called the it, wingman, the, It's right? called the wingman. Yeah. Right? Um... You think it'd work? So I, well, I've seen it. I don't know. I'm not really crazy about it. It's kind of goofy looking. Well, I know, but you know. Anyways, he said, well, you know, you should use it on show. Sure. Well, yeah, if you want to buy some advertising, we'll we'll do. It. Anyways, we dropped it. About a month after that, we end up. Uh, we get a call from Northwest Territories as saying that they want to buy a, a couple of episodes and would we go and shoot there this year? And so we asked them uh, some, some uh, send us some details, et cetera. So they sent us some details along with video. And one of the video pieces they sent was this poor guy out in the water trying to fish and honest to God, Ian, the bugs were like, I thought they were hummingbirds. Like, what do I know? I thought they were hummingbirds flying around. Remember that, that piece of yeah, video? Yeah. And we said, oh my God. God, like, do we really want to go yeah. there? And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a product that might help us. And then that's what I called <laughs> you back. And I say, it's your lucky day. Uh, as it turned out, though, we just got back, by the way. Uh, it was so cold. There wasn't a bug within a thousand miles of us up yeah, there. We didn't even need them. Really? We didn't even need them. Uh, but we will use them later on in the year. And I will be sending you a check or check. A yeah, bill. You send me oh, a check. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go, a Ian. We bill. heard it. We heard it. <laughs> in writing. A bill of some sort for my services. Yeah. We did but, play um, around. One day they came out a little bit, and we yeah. had him on the boat, and we uh, yeah, talk, we played talk. around a little bit with them. The black flies didn't seem to be affected by it, but I'll tell you what. We did have some horse flies. These giant yeah. horse flies came in one day, and they would be nowhere to be seen once that dragonfly was put around, you know, either off your hat. Or I just started moving it around a little bit in the boat like that. Those big guys were gone. Those big yeah. bad biters, they were gone. So that was a quick experiment, but it did work. So I, I understand he could uh, be bought fairly cheaply. What Probably your best uh, source of advertising for this is uh, our cameraman, um, Volva, who has got this relationship with bugs that I've never seen before. Totally, totally uh, from another planet. But uh, I, when I first told him about this thing, he, he was just all, oh, my God, he's, this is great. And so on this shoot, it's single-digit weather. So we're talking eight, nine degrees. There isn't a bug. The closest bug would have been in Edmonton, okay? That's how far <laughs> away they were. He's got three of these dragons hanging off him underneath your bug suit. 
with muskall sprayed on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get bit. Boba does not like bugs, that's for sure. And I can't blame them. They're not fun to have around. No. But, no. but uh, yeah. It, by the way, if, if you you need to invent a, a Volva rain gear because what Volvo does is at the end of every year it doesn't matter what he's wearing there's so much musk all on his rain gear you gotta throw it in the garbage because it's going to go away and you gotta get a new rain jacket every time so <laughs> he's a beast are you guys still doing musk call or no that's no can no you, can you tire about that it, they own it now they yeah. own it yeah I haven't yeah. seen it around at all uh, there's you a know, only, it's only at Canadian Tire it's but, still but, sold is it yeah. I haven't even seen I, it. Yeah, I, was, I haven't seen it either. I, we were in Canadian Tire uh, before this trip, and I walked around and didn't see a damn thing. Oh, Most really? No, they yeah. should have. I think yeah. it's in a different section than the sporting goods. Yeah. That's why. There's yeah. a case There's a case where advertising made a huge... A product hadn't changed. The same thing for, for the better part of 20 years, 15, 20 years, they did a ton of marketing. I mean, muscal yep. became known as if you were going to the outdoors and you didn't have muscal, what are you, an idiot? That's mm -hmm. how strong their messaging well, was. Well, often their, their competition, did they not have advertising before Moscow with that uh, yeah, arm in the Yeah, but it wasn't, and it all wasn't the same. Like Muscal, and I don't want to toot our horn, but I will, just in case you're interested. Uh, muscal decided to buy us, the people who use Right. the product in the field as opposed to off off went the other way they want this the lab the scientists and right. all of this stuff right and they went from zero to a kabillion miles per hour in that two decade period and then they sold the company uh shearing plow i think bought it first time and then bear and then um now can you tire but it's gone downhill ever since as soon as they pulled it out of sight out of mind area they just Mm -hmm. Right off the market. That's what yeah. advertising does, right? So, musk oil. And they still don't get the case, name right. No, it's People yeah. still don't get it right. Musk oil. You got any of that musk oil stuff? Um, and, it's all, and it's all the same. Every, every bug spray is exactly the same. Tell people why. Right. Tell people why it's all well, exactly it's, the same. It's, it's legislated. Exactly. I mean, you're only allowed to have X amount of DEET in it, and then this is the formula, and it's all the same. It doesn't matter who's, who's you buy. It's all marketing. And it's there all made... Go. One of two places is making it, so yeah. uh, it's it's all the same same stuff, uh, just brand, see? and that's marketing. See, there you go. You even, and that came out of your own mouth. It's all yeah, marketing. Yeah, I I understand. I, I mean, I'm not have been too bright with my marketing strategy, but hey, we did okay. The other thing is internet, um, and I and I know the answer to this, but I want to just run this by you. See, me, I'm a simple kind of guy, right? It's supply and demand, and you guys have got the supply like nobody else has on the planet when it comes to outdoor goods. So to me, it's simple. How big is your warehouse, by the way? 140,000 square feet. That's a pretty good from, size warehouse. From, from ceiling to floor of inventory it's a lot, and, it's and it doesn't matter whether you go there in june whether you go there in january whether you go there it doesn't matter there i always think to myself well how in the hell is it possible that every month i come in here it's all the same but yet you guys sell millions and millions and billions of pieces every month like how do you how do you but anyways they do they manage but what I was going to say, now that you got me completely off, uh, off topic, what, where was I? Internet. Internet. Web. See, to me, it's simple. There's nobody that could do internet better than you because you've got everything already in place, and yet you're not doing it. And that's because of the philosophy of the company that, that hey, they, do, they start selling a, a product out of their warehouse. What happens to the poor mom, pa, little customer in Pembroke, Ontario that spends, that buys maybe $12,000 a year from you. Right. But, sure. but, but you, but that's important to you. Okay. So let's, let's, let's talk about that. So here you have all these big brands, right? That all the shops have been supporting for years and years. They come to you nine months in advance. They want your booking order. And you know, if you don't book, you don't get it. This and that, whatever. Okay, great but you gotta have the big brand or you can't be in business. But all the big brands today, they have their own website selling directly to the public. They have their own stores, whether it's in uh, discount malls or wherever. Um, and they're now your competition. How is that 
fair to the poor guy who's been supporting him for 20, 30 years that all of a sudden the guys that are your, you know, the brands you've supported are your competitor, your biggest competitor, in fact. And you take, for example, a year like this, which has been a really tough, tough year. And these guys, you know, the brands, you know, anybody who's online has lots of inventory and their, you know, sales aren't great. And they're going and discounting the product. Who's that hurting? It's hurting their customer. So I don't want to play that game. I I just don't want to play that game. I I, I find it a no-win situation, you know, to sit and compete against my customers who've been good to me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and that's, that's the philosophy that you just don't get now. You don't hear that anywhere. No, no. So get, everyone thinks I'm nuts. Yeah, he he yeah. could literally, in 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 a a, a thirty day period, change the retail industry in this country. Oh God, yeah. By going online, yeah, I'm, it wouldn't take more than a month. Yeah, but true. But he doesn't do it, and that's why I love the man. Good because man. he's got good he's man. got beliefs and he stands by them, and uh, and it, it drives me crazy. But hey, what do I know? Yeah. Um, what do I know? I don't well, know much either. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go to the dark side, but um, uh, uh, uh. I, I kind of mm-hmm. need to uh, uh. a little bit. Uh, uh, there was there some, we uh, go. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, some concerns f- with you health wise oh. the last couple of years. And, Seven. Uh, a couple. I, I Seven. See, I know. <laughs> You're, but I was going to say, but who's counting? Obviously, mm-hmm. you are. Uh, can you walk us through that a little bit? You really want to hear that story? I do, I do, I do. Because I, the beginning of it especially is mind blowing. Yeah. The fact that you're healthy today is obviously very important, not only to people that know you, but uh, but people who are touched by your brands. So uh, that's a good thing. Well, well, well it was um, yeah, it was seven years ago. I was uh, waking up in the morning with a black eye. And uh, strange, It'd stay for about three, four, five days and go away. Come back a week later. Really odd. And I, you know, had to check with my wife if she was beating the shit out of me in the middle of the night or something. I didn't you know, know what been, was going on. Wouldn't have been shocking, but, you know. No, I, I, I would understand. Yeah, I would like, accept that. You know, an accidental uh, elbow or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, know. you know, but every once a week type of thing. But no, uh, it wasn't her. And, uh, one of my uh, one of my kids was like she had a real pain in the neck. She just kept, Dad, you got to see a doctor. You got to. Yeah. I said, I have like eighteen friends that are doctors. I've shown them all, and they all don't. They think it's nothing, right? They think you got a broken blood vessel or you got hit or whatever. Anyway, she was relentless. Thank God she was. Um, and uh, finally, one day, and the problem was, is that I'd get this black eye and it would go away, and I. It was hard to show my, my real doctor. So finally, one day I had it. I was there and I said, okay, doctor, what the hell is this? This this doesn't make any sense. And he took a look and he goes, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. He says, you know what? I'm going to send you to a dermatologist and uh, let him take a look. And I said, why? I don't have zits. He says, I got a black guy. (laughs) So he goes, don't be an idiot. And he goes, you know, these guys see a lot more with the skin than I would ever see. So just go check it out. All right, fine. So I go to the guy, he takes a look. Never seen anything like that before. It's a great, just what I need. So uh, he says, you know what? We're going to do a biopsy on your skin. And uh, I'll do it in a couple of weeks. That's when I do biopsies and we'll see what's going on in there. I said, okay, great. And uh, so he's, I'm getting ready to leave. This is one of those moments in your life that you don't forget. He stops me and he says, you know what? Hold on, I'm going to sit down. Something's bothering me. And he went and he checked and he comes back about a half hour later and says, okay, listen, I need you to do a certain kind of test. I won't get into all this, but he said, I need you to do a certain kind of test. I need to rule something out, make sure, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, turns out, uh, he calls me four or five days later and he says, Hey, Ian, I'm uh, going to cancel that biopsy we said we we're going to do. I said, Okay, great. He goes, uh, No, not exactly. He says, I need you to go see a hematologist straight away. I said, Hematologist? And uh, why? He says, oh, There's something that's not right. And uh, I'm not qualified to talk about it. So, sure. <laughs> so I said, uh, Is this serious? He goes, uh, I'm not qualified. He says, Just do me a favor and see someone like tomorrow. 
make a long story short, it turned out I had this uh, very rare blood disorder that uh, uh, they give you about a year. And um, you're screwed. Get your affairs in order. And uh, so uh, I went through uh, about 130 rounds of chemo. I've been through a stem cell transplant. I've been through all this kind of stuff. And the thing is, is though that this dermatologist, he caught it before any damage was done. Wow. And, and uh, I was so lucky. I'll thank this guy till I'm blue in the face. And all the people that have looked after me, I, I was very fortunate. So as it stands right now, I'm good. Um, wow. And, uh, you know, it's under control. Let's put it that way. So, And, and thank you to your concerned daughter, because that all started and getting And my right. daughter, so who she, she doesn't go a day without reminding me. <laughs> oh, I could imagine. <laughs> <Good for> her. <laughs> oh, wow, what a story. Uh, how much uh, maintenance is involved in? I, don't, I, don't. I have to go every four weeks for a treatment ah. and uh, no big deal. I, you know what? None of that means anything. That's yeah. Yeah. after all this crap I've mm-hmm. done and been yeah. through. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. No medication every day for it or anything like that. Or is there oh yeah. There's yeah. still crap I got to take and yeah. whatever, but it's fine. I mean, yeah. when you know what the alternative is, yeah. um, I'm okay with it. Good for you. Wow. What a story. Yeah. Wow just dawned on me by the way dean dean by the way our producer you've talked to him on the phone um, in fact i think he was he came yeah he was there yeah he, yeah. Met, yeah he really wanted to be here for this uh episode but uh, he fell ill today so he wrote a bunch of notes that he wanted i just it just dawned on me we haven't no. even, we haven't even opened his notes yet so <laughs> knock know. yourself out yeah exactly uh, I probably covered everything. That yeah, we did. We covered pretty much everything All in there, right, bud. Perfect. So, uh, what's new and exciting? What's coming up in this? Tell us about this industry, the outdoors. What's your prognostication on where it's going to be twelve months from now? Who the hell knows? I have no clue. <laughs> the uh, it's uh, remember we went through the pandemic and outdoor stuff was king, right? I mean, everybody yeah. stayed at home. Right. Everyone had money to spend, and yeah. you know, whatever. Once we came out of COVID, no way. People were going back to restaurants. People were traveling. People, whatever, no money anymore for for this kind of stuff. So, it's it's a real challenge right now for the retailers, for the wholesalers, for whoever, uh, because there's a lot of goods in the system, and um, it's going to take some time to things to normalize and. Uh, so it's it's going to be tough for the next year or so, I think. Are people uh, still know? camping? Are there is there a very oh, yeah. a lot of people still camping? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's still it's still uh, big and whatever. But people have have you know they a lot of people bought during the yeah. pandemic. You yeah. know, so. Yeah, so they have their gear, they have their goods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. which is understandable. Of course, so. of course. Aside from the dragon, by the way, how did you get involved with this drag or dragon, the the the, the flying dragon, Wing, the wingman, the wingman? How'd well, you- <laughs> I was watching Dragons Den one night, okay, and uh, all of a sudden this guy walks out with a baseball hat and two dragonflies coming off his uh, cap, and I'm, God, this guy looks really strange. And I thought this is going to be a joke, right? right? And the five dragons also thought. This is a joke, right? And he went and he did his his routine and whatever. And everybody, including myself, went, hmm, kind of makes sense. And he ended up getting a deal with all five of them. <laughs> and that, which was a shock, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyways, after the show, as you know, I do a lot of bug products and this and that. So I thought, hey, you know what? Be a good item to... Uh, just put in that I can service the small stores with whatever and no big deal. He's in local, whatever. So I called the guy up, I talked to him and remember it was probably six months after the show had aired. So, uh, and he said, well, yeah, I know who you are. He says, yeah, maybe I'll come and see you. Said, Fine. So he comes in and he, uh, looked exactly like he did on the show and, uh, turns out just a super nice guy sweet guy, honest, um, whatever. And he, we talked for an hour, two hours, him and his wife. And he says, you know what? I like you guys. You seem like you're straight. He says, 
How about you do the distribution for the whole thing? Screw the dragons. I'm going to just do it with you. I said, if you want, sure. I said, so we, we made a deal. And uh, he's doing phenomenal. I mean, it's unbelievable how, how many of these things, like he does it, he does Amazon. I do the, uh, I do the store store. Yeah. And, uh, he's had like 7 million views on TikTok. He's had like, it's unbelievable and products doing really well. So oh, that's a that, great story. Another one yeah. similar to that was, uh, I got a call one day from Ian. You remember this. We, we had been negotiating with a company out of, uh, I want to say LA, maybe New York can't remember where they were based, but an American company that was doing copper clothing, right. copper infused clothing. Right. Tommy, Tommy Copper. Tommy Copper. And we were negotiating mm-hmm. uh, with them for about a year. We finally had a deal pretty much done. Lawyers had vetted it. And, you know, everybody was happy with the whole thing. And um, so you talked to me? Not yet. Not yet, <laughs> but um, I got cold feet at the end. There was some some money issues that didn't feel right for me. Yeah, because we were set up to go Remember? to a photo shoot, a video shoot, the whole nine the whole yards. Nine the yards Canadians. The com- we had the commercial. Roland Martin and Jimmy exa- Houston exactly, and all those guys, exactly. right? Yeah. And then last minute, uh, there was some money issues that I wasn't real. Not that that's a problem. But it didn't feel right. You know what I mean, Ian? Something was not right. So anyways, uh, I said, listen, I can't do it. I can't do it. I got, there's a lot of, it's not just me. I got all these other big people, the celebrities and stuff in the business. And I just, I just can't, can't do it. So sorry. I get a call about a month later from Mr. Mutcher. And he says, what do you know about uh, copper and clothing and stuff? You're wondering how, so, clairvoyant, well, this, this guy, like how does he crazy. know this? <laughs> What do you mean, what do I know? I said, you obviously know that I've been working with Tommy Copper. He said, who? I said, Tommy Copper. No, no, no. This guy came in and he's got to tell the story from that point on about what you did with that line. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, well, this guy was different. Um, oh, yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, he, he, he's a fabric specialist, actually, and he, they had done this, and he didn't really know how to take it to market or whatever, so I decided to take it on. It's called Copper 88, and uh, it's uh, basically, it's legit. Uh, most, if not all, of the copper products you see out there um, that say copper, whatever it is, they don't have any copper in it. Like zero. It, it's um, not legislated. Nobody looked re- regulated. Nobody looks at that and says, Hey, no. you put copper on your packaging. Why is it not in there? Well, and in fact, most of them don't even, if you look in the contents, they don't even say that there's copper in it. Oh. Um, a lot of them, what they'll do is they'll just take a regular acrylic or polyester, or whatever they'll spray it with a little compound, but it's useless. It'll just wash out and, or come off in a, in a like, just like that. So what, what, yeah. m- this guy that came to me developed was it's actually embedded into the yarns of the fabric. So, and it's a heavy content of copper, so it will not wash out. Um, it's actually, uh, it's antimicrobial. I mean, that's the one thing about copper that is legit. It's, it's, it is antimicrobial. Um, and it will help in certain cases on infections and stuff like that to prevent or whatever. Like if you notice, I mean, there's a lot of people that are going to copper now for tabletops, for um, door accessories, any place that, that gets a lot of touching because copper is, is excellent against uh, bacteria. Mm. So, <clears throat> so anyway, so we started this line uh, copper 88 and it's, it's done extremely well here in, in Canada. We have it in, in, some of the major chains like Shoppers, Walmart, uh, Mark's Warehouse. So they've all uh, come into this and uh, it's done very well. Um, And it is legit. Like, I mean, when we say it's copper, it is actually copper. So. um, And by the way, uh, I wouldn't say this publicly, but just between us girls, I use it. I use it a lot. I have a problem. No, it's with good it. for old people. That's why. So. That's exa- I was just going to say yeah. that. If, be, yeah. Instead of you being ignorant about it, I was going to come out of the closet. That, he wasn't <laughs> being ignorant. He was just state. Hey, what about oh, but when, we, when we had the, when we were working with Tommy Copper, yes. one of the things they said about it was that um, 
it masks or takes away or, or like odor. body odor, like, do yeah. you, like under, underarm odor. Does it do that? Is copper it- will do that. If you do have a copper content, yeah, it will. Um, it, it is anti uh, odor as well. Because the reason I say that is because in a, in a shirt, like uh, let's say an undershirt, undergarment, like Ian's talking about, you go on these multi-day trips into the uh, hunting camp, into a fishing camp or whatever, there's no washing facilities at all. And you want to wear that shirt, you can wear that two or three days in a row. You're smiling, you're smirking. Why are you smirking? Yeah. I'm thinking of something and I don't want to, I'm not going to. You can do that. I mean, yes, put you your deodorant on, but you know, you know, you'll yes. stink up the whole yes, place. Oh, <laughs> now I know what you're talking about. I know what you're thinking about for those anti-deodorant users. Maybe is that what you're thinking? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they guy, those guys shouldn't be in a camp with us anyway. Should oh, they? Really? Stop it. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Uh, uh, but uh, no, it does work. I have some issues with uh, arthritis. Arthritis. Right? Yeah. And I'll tell you, I swear by those gloves. I absolutely swear by them. I never told you that because you won't pay me to tell you that. So just did. Uh, we're gonna no. We're gonna edit. Did this. I charge you for the gloves? Here's the five bucks. Oh, don't see? hurt you. Don't see? hurt yourself. <laughs> he's okay. always he's the best guy at comebacks for you ever. I don't love hurt you, yourself, <laughs> brother. You're the best. Right? <laughs> um, you know what? You can do a favor for your friend every now and then. You know, exactly. you're such a That's high profile personality. That's yeah. all I've done for the last thirty years is favors okay. for a friend. That was 20 more years. I even took you fishing. I even took you fishing once. That was fun, actually. I remember that. (laughs) It was a great day. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. They're I've been asking them forever to go out, but it's hard to get them out of the office, right? So, but one Mm -hmm. day, one day we did it, and it was uh, it was a memorable day. Absolutely, I bet you it was. And I was cleaning up some stuff when we moved into the new building. I was cleaning up some stuff uh, (laughs) about a year ago, I guess, and and I come across this great picture of him holding. The fish of the trip. Yeah. Nice. And I set it out to him. But, nice. Uh, anyways, um, there's a million other things that we could go through, but if I, if we did it all now, we couldn't do a part two and a part three and a part four to this show. You mean I got to do this again? Yeah, yeah I, I think say, so. It took a while to get him on this one. It's about like 20, 30 <laughs> years, so you might want to you know, not cross well, your fingers there. Well, now that he knows we don't bite... Right. Uh, yeah. Well, let's see if your viewers are, want me to come back. You know, I mean. Uh, well, do you want to ask them? Shall we ask them? You know nah. what? They could. They could decide. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's not a bad idea at all. So what Ian nah. is saying, if I understand correctly, you're throwing Ian under the bus. Don't. Yeah. Don't throw me under the bus, man. Don't throw me. Not a good idea. No. Not a good idea. I have behaved for the last hour. He has. By the People way. have no idea how well Ian's behaved in this. Yeah. Hour. You don't know how tense I am right now. Like when we go off, when this show's over, you're going to go in the corner there in your books and scream. I know you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you've done a, you. You've done a great job, buddy. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, we will get you back on the program again. We'll we'll talk about the dragonfly thing in the next. Uh, yeah, a little we're going to give her a good test for because sure. I think there's a, a lot of products. Uh, I don't know whether you're aware of it or not, but Peter and I spend probably as much time in the outdoors as anybody else that you know. There's mm-hmm. a lot of great ideas in these heads that you might want to try and mine out some of that gold. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but I don't. I can't afford it from you guys. Ah, okay, it's, it yeah. always comes yeah. down to that, eh? Yeah. Well, hey. <laughs> I love it. Uh, My best. friend, uh, thank you so much for this interview, and uh, it um, it's muchly appreciated. For sure. Thanks yeah. for having me. It was All a right. pleasure. And best of health. We'll talk to you soon, and uh, say hi to Mike and uh, the rest of the family, and we will uh, do this again. Fair enough. All right. Uh, Thanks. Uh, see you, buddy. Thanks, that's, guys. That's long overdue. Oh, yeah. Long Obviously. Overdue. I was surprised when you said he was never on the radio show. I always thought no. he was. He you know, did oh, that, you know too, bad, bad. too bad he's gone. But what he used to do, he was famous for um, about an hour after the radio show would go off the air, I'd get a little text from him saying, who the fuck was that guy? Or <laughs> what's that shit you're spewing about that? Or, <laughs> that's so uh, him right there. <laughs> And then I'd say, well, why don't you come on the show? Uh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, you never did. That but, is uh, awesome. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we just basically, we didn't even t- oh, scratch the surface scratch. Yeah. of this this company and this family yeah. and this name, yeah. uh, the Mutures. Um, incredible people. I, I just, uh, I dread thinking of where this industry in Canada would have been and would be today were it not for yeah, yeah. them. Yeah, uh, for sure. It, it 
it there yeah, you gotta that. wonder for sure right yeah would anybody had the wherewithal would anybody had the gumption the, the drive and desire yeah that's the next time you're in your favorite uh retail shop uh mass merchant especially start looking in the camping department start looking underneath uh, where the labels are yeah, look and at, look, look for, for bush line look outdoors for, look for a world famous uh brand there with it it'll blow your mind as to how big these guys are but as you just witnessed by one of the principal owners of the company um they're just regular people they are they are and so regular dudes totally, in nine to five uh, every day in the office you know what i mean totally Hard unassuming workers. totally yep. unassuming people that's why i love them Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Totally different type of program for us, but we uh, we thought we've been talking about this for hey, some time. We're the outdoor yeah. journal. Exactly. That's outdoors, brother. Exactly. You got to do it outdoors too, right? Not just fishing. No. Oh. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about our latest uh, trip. We'll do that. Uh, well, we did it on the road trip version of exactly. this already, but but now exactly. that we're back in the comfy confines yeah, of we'll uh, do that ODJ next, Studios. Next uh, We should talk about it a little bit. For sure, yeah. Because there was one thing that came up when it was all said and done. And I'll quickly do this before we sign off. So as you know, I'm responsible for all of the paperwork and you know any bills, any expenses while I'm on the road. I have to submit them to the accounting office and the people there, especially the CFO of the company, combs through every single receipt and every single expense uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, yes. So yesterday uh, I got a call from the accounting department saying that there was a bit of a discrepancy between what I submitted and what actually took place. Oh, my. <laughs> Which is totally unusual for no, me. Oh, yes. yes <laughs> but indeed. anyways, so in I go. I was like going to the principal's office, and um, there was a bunch of paper on, on the desk with marks on them, and I was up against the wall being interrogated, and the tone, the tone, the tonality was not very friendly. <laughs> and uh, she says, "The CFO is a she." The she CFO, the chief Countess, female officer, the Countess of Sandra Stesh, yes, said, "How the hell is it possible that you go from Toronto?" To Yellowknife, from Yellowknife to Hay River, Hay River, and Hay River to Brabant, Re Brabant Lodge, with a total weight, luggage weight of seven hundred and sixty-two pounds, or whatever it is. It's a lot of luggage. Okay, that's we carry a lot. That's exactly what I said. We carry a lot of stuff. You have you, have you ever been out in the field carrying the stuff that we carry on these shoots? She says, no, what I want to know is how in the hell do you go out with 700 and change, but you come back with more? She says, I know you guys bring, I know you guys, I know you guys bring booze in. So I would have thought that you left a couple empty of empty, yeah. empties there. So that yeah. would have been a few pounds yeah. off your weight. Yep. But I had never thought for one moment that you could increase the freight coming out. And now when I first got, I was like, I was shocked. I was like, Jesus, what did I do now? You know, I didn't know, I didn't know what the answer was. Because normally we'll just shuffle things around and make each bag 50 pounds or less than 50 pounds. And you might shuffle things here to there, but, but you never don't get rid of it. With yeah. a, a considerable amount more weight than you went in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, was, I was like, uh, uh, I, uh, I don't know, but uh, well, well, well uh, yeah. Because, you know, I was, I, I, was on the, I was on the wire, right? Okay. She had a gun to your it, head and a knife to your throat, right? And then it dawned on me. The rocks. <laughs> Stevie's Steve rocks. Steve Ditzwicky. <laughs> what a farmer he is. <laughs> Steve Ditzwicky found some rocks while we were up in uh, Northwest Territories on the mouth of the Mackenzie River. While we were shooting, he was with the camera crew. Rock hunting. Rock hunting. And he decided to bring rocks back in the luggage and in the suitcases. <laughs> and she picked it up. The CFO so picked Stevie. it up. So there How much go. extra weight was it? Uh, you remember? I'm, I'm going to say 30 some odd pounds. Come on. Oh, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> yeah. And I saw that one big beehive looking rock he had. Exactly. That, he must have had more than that too then. Anyways. Wow. 
Anyways, That's hilarious. Just, I just want to say that. Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. Thank you, Stevie. I appreciate it. Make it hurt one. like Stevie right exactly. there. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> On that note, I want to remind everybody, you know, you won't find rocks there, but you'll find all kinds of goodies at fishingcanada.com. A couple and of rock more stars. Come on now. Rock stars. Ooh, yeah, a little couple of rock stars. would have been nice. Brum, little, 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 yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dean, who was not with us today, hopefully you're feeling better, buddy, by the time you watch. Yeah, I, I talked to him this, today. He said his uh, temperature, he can't get it under 100 so far. Wow. That's so terrible. he's up there. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of the entire uh, crew of Volvo, who's got a new position now, he's normally over there, but now we know that over there doesn't require him to be over there. Well, he's That's, doing both now. Come on, oh, don't. doing both. All Dude, right, the guy nice. is a multitasker. Come on. Let's yeah. let's give him props when we can, okay? Uh -huh. He's doing There's a great job. There's a bunch job. of bullshit. <laughs> <That's>, uh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> and he did that to himself, just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Volvo was behind the board today, and Nikki V was, uh, I guess, uh, the, the Monitor, runner. He was monitoring. He was monitoring the rest of us on behalf of them and the entire crew at ODJ. Uh, Peter Bowman, I'm Angelo Biles. Thanks for joining us. Talk to you soon.